Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma bar ahabati fillah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hayyakum Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm and nafi rizkin tayyib wa amal al-muttaqabbil and knowledge that benefits us and does not harm us and take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq and remembering him and worshiping him subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many, many sins. We reach the fourth principle in Asul al-Sitta uh, where Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, al-asl al-rabi' He said, bayan ilm wa ulama wa fiqh wa fuqaha wa bayan ma tashabbahu بهم وليس منهم وقد بين الله تعالى هذا الأصل في أول سورة البقرة من قوله تعالى يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا, اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم إلى قوله قبل ذكر إبراهيم عليه الصلاة والسلام يا, يا بني إسرائيل ويزيده وضوحا ما صرحت به السنة في هذا في هذا من كلام كثير البين الواضح للعام البليد ثم صار هذا أقرب أشياء أقرب أشياء وصار العلم وفق هو بدع وضلالات وخيار ما عندهم لبس الحق بالباطل وصار العلم الذي فرض الله تعالى على الخلق ومدحه لا يتفوه به إلا زنديق أو مجنون وصار من أنكره وعاداه وصنف في تحذير منه والناهي أنه هو فقي العالم So the Sheikh said in the fourth uh, asl, uh, the fourth principle, he said that this fourth principle is an explanation of knowledge and the scholars of the ulama and, uh, and fiqh and the jurists, the fuqaha, and an explanation of those who attempt to resemble them whilst they are not from them. Indeed, Allah the Exalted has explained this principle in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah in the statement of Allah the Exalted, O children of Israel, remember my favor upon you, which I bestowed upon you. Up until his statement before mentioning Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, O children of Israel, remember my favor which I bestowed upon you and how I favored you over all of the worlds. So, and then he mentioned that these principles are this principle has been clarified very clearly and there are many examples from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam that clarify that clarify this point the importance of who knowing who the knowledge the people of knowledge are and who the fuqaha, the people who have fiqh fi deen. Uh, in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu there are many statements which clarify this, that even the most uh, ignorant from the lay persons would understand. And he said, these things became strange, meaning knowing and understand this, standing who the ulama are, became something strange to the people in the ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And knowledge and fiqh, you know, this understanding became to the people bid'ah wa dalalat. And how many statements of bid'ah have we seen from the people who say, well, you know, you can't read the Qur'an. No, you shouldn't try to understand the Qur'an. Uh, no, you need a scholar for this. My shaykh, my madhab. SubhanAllah, if you hear the stories, I was just talking to uh, someone recently about their experience growing up in the Pakistani community and all of the bid'ah that they grew up with in their schools that the people so many things we would just think were so strange 
that you have to write a certain number on the page because so uh, you know instead of writing Bismillah Bismillah it's too long and then you have the name of Allah there so a number I think 783 or something like this that this represents Bismillah and so the people would do this on their exams uh, if you have your hand down while you're praying that if your hand is not, and not properly on your knee in accordance to their method then they will say that the day of judgment you'll have your fingers cut your hand will cut so this shows you the bit of in the that crept into the ummah of muhammad sallallahu and where did they get all of this from from their so-called scholars scholars of dalalat and this is what sheikh muhammad rahimahullah ta'ala is clarifying for us so he says then he goes on to say and the best of them is those who who make the the uh, who deceive the people with uh, falsehood over the truth? They make the the falsehood seem true, and they made elm that Allah has made as an obligation upon His creation and praised uh, them for it. That that the one who who has this knowledge, mean the knowledge of Tawheed and so forth, that they are a zindiq. They are like a heretic for a lack of better terms and zindiq is a very complex term and it had different meanings uh, from the earlier generations to the latter generations but anyway basically that someone is a heretic or that they are majnun or that they are crazy meaning the people who teach tawheed they study tawheed they're busying these categories of tawheed and all of this those guys are crazy but instead we should be focusing on other things. We should be focused on the politics and contemporary issues only. We don't really need and our social uh, our social uh, problems and, and things that we are challenged with at the expense of Tawheed. So you can hear that even in contemporary times there are people in the Western societies who have a view similar, a view which is taken from these concepts where they belittle Tawheed and the, the, the knowledge of Aqidah, you know, those things which are bring, bringing you closer to Allah that enter you in the fold of Islam and can take you out of the fold of Islam for not practicing and not understanding, that they belittle this knowledge in exchange for something else, in exchange for, uh, by exalting another uh, type of knowledge or another type of science. And then he said, and it is the affair has come to where the one who denies it and opposes it, meaning opposes Tawheed, uh, or, or opposes it and writes against it, Nam. So this is the person who opposes, uh, you know, the correct Aqid and this, this asl of who the ulama are and the, and the correct Islamic knowledge. The ones who write against it, who oppose it, who negate it and write and warn against it and prohibit it that those are the fiqih al-alam those are the ones who are the people of understanding and the people of knowledge subhanallah and subhanallah this is so uh true if we really analyze this this is in the in, in past times but even in contemporary times think about some of those mubtadi'in there's a famous professor in america and i'm not going to name him now i have named him on other occasions who uh, who this individual uh, makes all kind of fatwa against everything the whole destroys the whole usul of Islam in fact even to the extent of where he makes fatwa well there's a old shad that uh, 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 a Christian man can marry a Muslim woman no you don't have to wear a hijab that it all kind of tawil facet you you just don't it's hard to comprehend that someone like this considers himself a Muslim and making the halal haram and the haram halal and all of these types of concepts. So it shows us the danger of not having proper Islamic knowledge and not uh, adhering to those principles and that the affair be has, has come to where it has become the opposite of the way it should be, that the people of uh, who stand against Tawheed 
and stand against the creed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that they are the the people who the people uh, the, they, they are exalted their ulama and in fact the the uh, Ahlul Sunnah and the people who adhere to Kitab Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf they are strange they are ignorant they are crazy they are uh, extreme they are Wahhabi they are Salafi Jadida they are this they are this all these kind of names that the people uh, used to try to slander and belittle Ahlul Sunnah and be, belittle the path uh, of adhering to the Sabil al Mu'minin, the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa atasimu bi habili la jami an wala tafarku, adhere all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. The path where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the hadha sarati mustaqim fa atabiyu wa la ta'tabiyu subul, that verily this is my straight path. So adhere to it and do not follow the various paths. So that has become strange in the eyes of the believers or the eyes of the Muslim, the general Muslim, because they've been deviated from people of Bida, the people of Zandaka, who, who distort the religion of Islam from its pristine, pristine uh, form, which was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Imam Fozan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says uh, regarding this some very important points about this principle of the importance of the people of knowledge and this asl min usul he mentions the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem innama yakhsha allaha min ibadihi al-ulama Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem verily those who fear Allah the most are the ulama so that means they have the, the correct knowledge, and this is why we have love for the ulama, because of their practice. We don't just love someone because he has a certain name, he's a certain tribe, he's a certain nation, he's a certain color. All these other uh, ways of, of, of just loving someone which is not something which is mishroor, but rather we love the ulama for their adherence to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is illustrated, habatifillah, in the way that sometimes we see people who were known for down to Ahlul Sunnah, but then they go astray. They go astray clearly by violating the usul of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And so that shows that our love for them was built upon and should be built upon their adherence to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their preaching of the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and expounding upon those things that needed to be that need to be expounded upon teaching us the kitab illah wa sunnah of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in accordance with the salaf of this ummah that those are the characteristics we look for and those are the ones who fear uh, Allah the most and in this uh, Sheikh Salih bin Fozan he mentions that this uh, this ayat and that when we discuss about talking about uh, ulama in ilm, that this isn't talking about being a, uh, a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, um, a carpenter, or whatever uh, worldly type of knowledge, that those things are good and fine, and we need those things. But that is not what the scholars in classical times, up until now, classified as what is called ilm nafia beneficial knowledge meaning those that knowledge has benefit in the dunya but the truly beneficial knowledge is that which brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which has to do with your worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. that is the truly beneficial knowledge the truly uh, true ilm nafia falls under that ayat innama yakhsha Allah min ibadi al ulama verily those who fear Allah the most are the ulama and those are the ulama of Kitab wa Sunnah. And then uh, the Shaykh mentioned also another ayat. He mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ نِفْتَرَ اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَيُدِلَّ النَّاسِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ in Surah Al An'am. Uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then who is more misguided, uh, you know, than the one who lies about Allah and misguides the people without knowledge? 
that is imperative for us to, to contemplate and stop there. And then we need to reflect on this. Because how many people out there are calling? There's so many people calling out there, calling to Islam and inviting. And alhamdulillah, this is khair kathir. But you should know your, your ability. And that if you don't have knowledge, perhaps it's better that you spend your time seeking knowledge before you rush to call people to that. Because as Imam Bukhari mentioned in his Sahih, he mentioned a chapter, Bab al-ilm, qabla al-qawli wal-amal. The chapter entitled, Knowledge Precedes uh, Actions and Statements. Letting us know that first and foremost, we need knowledge in order to practice and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. We need knowledge before we speak about the religion of Allah and before we act in accordance with the, uh, the, the religion of the law. So how can we act in accordance with the religion, religion of law bila ilm, without ilm? We can't. And the danger that we find is contained in that ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who is more misguided than the one who lies, tells a lie about Allah. They lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and then they misguide the people without knowledge. SubhanAllah, this can happen. This isn't just the one who's just totally ignorant. But in fact, this can happen to any of us with our limitations and knowledge. Say someone is a beginning student of knowledge and they want to speak about tabdi and tafsik and takfir, issues that are major issues, major messiah. They can fall into the trap and be deceived by the shaitan and then even begin to say something that isn't true either thinking it's true or just for the sake of argument and defending their ego, they can tell a lie on a law or on his religion and make a mistake that is a very serious mistake and incur a major sin when they intended good initially. Or perhaps they didn't intend good. Perhaps it was an ego thing. This is why, one of the reasons why we should be cautious of debating. If you don't have the knowledge to debate and meet the criterion that the scholars mention, the classical scholars mention regarding debating and arguing, then you should avoid it at all costs because it's very easy for our desires to overtake us and then us to say something without uh, knowledge. You know, someone attacks our honor, we want to step up to the plate, come right back at them uh, with, uh, with an attack or with a lie or a distortion of the truth and often because we don't know the truth. So this is the point, and this is a very dangerous, dangerous trait. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ اِفْتَرَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لِيُدِلَّ النَّاسَ بِغَيْرِ عَلْمِ To deceive the people without knowledge. They don't have knowledge. And they deceive the people because they lied about Allah, saying Allah says, or what means this in the Quran, or I think it means this. Or it does mean this, but they're lying because they didn't even study that. They didn't even study, they don't have any background in that. Wallahu musta'an. Imam Fozen mentions about this. He mentions a statement, perhaps it's a statement of the Salaf, and I believe Ibn al-Qayyum has mentioned a statement similar to this, which says, which is, يفسد الدنيا أربع نصف الثقي ونصف نحوي ونصف الطبيب ونصف متكلم so this is a beautiful statement here. Uh, and the statement is that there are four who cause wickedness and facade or destroy the dunya. They destroy the dunya. Uh, the one who has only half knowledge, meaning he's a nisfa faqih. He's not really grounded in knowledge in anything, and he just speaks. You know, he speaks about the deen. You know, maybe he has some little bit of knowledge. He's a nisfa faqih. Okay? The second is a nisfa nahwi, someone who has some knowledge of the the Arabic language or the uh, the nahwu, the grammar, but they, they're not really well grounded. Okay? And the nisfa tabib, the doctor who is only who who only has half knowledge, so he studied. He knows a little bit, but he's making uh, uh, 
prescriptions and he's looking at people's symptoms and he's making declarations of what they need to and prescribing medicine for them. And he's only half a to be, meaning he doesn't really have knowledge. He studied a couple of textbooks. He studied, he didn't finish his doctorate's school or license or whatever. He's half a Tabib. He's half a doctor. And the, the last one he mentioned, or the next one he mentioned, when this mutakallam, and the one who's only who who speaks, who is not really grounded in and in, in have knowledge of what they're talking about. Okay? So then he says the first one which is the, 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 the half scholar, if you, if you will, he destroys whole countries. His, his destruction affects countries. The second one, the one whose grammar is only half uh, a nahwi, that this one destroys the tongue because he's teaching you Arabic grammar, for example, but he's, he doesn't know anything about Arab. You know, he's destroying this. He's putting kasra where it should be a bamma. He's making a sukun where it should be a... Afetha, uh, you know, is a nisbanahwi. So he destroys your tongue because you'll you'll inherit or you'll you'll gain uh, many mistakes in the Arabic grammar and your reading and everything else because you don't really know Arab. You don't know really the science of uh, of grammar of the, and the gram grammatical syntax. Uh, and then the next one he said, and the other one he destroys the body, meaning the the half doctor. He destroys your body. And the last one, he destroys your religion, meaning he speaks about this topic and this topic, he destroys your religion because he's not grounded in anything. He's not helping you to get grounded in anything. Wallahu musta'an. Those are uh, some of the benefits Imam Fozan uh, mentioned uh, in regards to that. And there are so many books of the Salaf which uh, are about this topic that Imam Muhammad, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, mention about uh, you know this fourth principle about the importance of knowing what knowledge is and who the scholars are you know and uh, you know knowing ilm and knowing the ulama knowing who the real ulama and knowing what fiqh fi deen is and what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say mean yura dallahu bi khairan yafqa fi deen whenever allah wants good for a person he gives him understanding of the religion so that ilm that fiqh that true understanding cuz Knowledge is not just memorized. Say if you memorize all these books, that's something of knowledge. But are you practicing it? And do you understand it? And can you implement it with thick, with understanding, with insight and basira? There are some there are many people who have memorized a lot, but they know very little. And there are many people who know a lot, but they haven't memorized much. There are also those. So you have, so the one who's on the khair, the path of khairain, that has the best of both worlds, is the one who has memorized and they are blessed with understanding and insight and basira, and they can implement those, those principles that are, that, are, uh, that are derived from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the path of the Salaf of this Ummah. That is fiqh fi deen, and that's what we want to strive towards. Uh, Imam Zayd rahimahullah ta'ala commented about this. He said, There are so many ways in which Allah, the blessed and exalted, has clarified the status of Sharia knowledge, the status of the Sharia scholars, and the status of Islamic fiqh. This is taken from the Book of Allah and the authentic Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the correct understanding. And Allah has also explained the status of the fuqaha, meaning the jurists. So they are the heads of the ummah and the illustrious ones of every society. And that is for no other reason except that they strive hard and spend the majority of their time in gaining in fiqh concerning the religion of Allah, which is a distinguishing sign of good fortune for the one who strives hard in gaining fiqh uh, of it. It is as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever Allah desires good for, he grants him understanding of the religion. So the fuqaha of the book of their Lord and the authentic sunnah of their Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are the people of truthfulness, sincerity, clarification, and advice for the ummah. They are the noble and excellent ones of the people because they take the priceless inheritance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about which Allah the Blessed and Exalted said, 
then we cause to inherit the book those who those we have chosen of our servants. And amongst them is he who wrongs himself. And amongst them is he who is moderate. And amongst them is he who is foremost in good, in good deeds by the permission of Allah. That is the greatest virtue. Surah al uh, Fatir, uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 32. And those who have proceeded to good deeds are the ones who are the noblest of the categories of people. They are the scholars who act with the Sharia of Allah in every time and in every place. They are those who act in accordance to the Sharia whilst not uh, confining it to themselves, but they spread their benefit to other than them. So, so may it do them an abundance of good. How much they have from rewards if they are patient and sincere with Allah, the blessed and exalted, in everything that they come to spread speak and do they are truthful with the societies and striving hard to advise them for the acquisition of reward likewise Allah the blessed and exalted is directed towards that in his truthful statement and do good indeed Allah loves the doers of good so this shows us the importance of a very important principle which the the Salaf said which is and and will stop will end there which is that the al-amal thamarat al-ilm, that practice is the fruits of knowledge. And this is one of the scariest things for any of us who are trying to traverse the path of ilm. Because in fact, when I look around my library here, these books perhaps may bear witness against me. And the Quran, for sure, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, will either be a hujja luck or a hujja alaik. That it will either be an evidence, a proof that you were practicing and you understood and you did good deeds, that it's on your behalf, it will bear witness that you read it and you practiced it. Or it will be a witness against you that you didn't listen to the commands of Allah, you didn't practice, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. And we ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us of our many shortcomings, our many sins, and bless us all with ilm and nafiyah, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amal mutaqabila. And until the next time, ahabita fillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم